many people doing the talking. As if John didn't do anything. In the last week since this budget came out, there's been a lot of fear, there's been a lot of anger, justifiable anger in the public, and there's been a lot of really difficult stories to hear. We've been hearing stories on up and line radio and in letters to the editors. We've been hearing all kinds of stories about the devastation that this budget is going to cause for the people of this province. And it breaks your heart to hear it. It breaks your heart. But at the same time, while this has been going on, while we've been hearing these sad stories, there's been people out there in our communities organizing. There's been people out there in our communities getting people together, figuring out how to care for one another. There's been people organizing demonstrations just like this one. And those are, those are the people... Those are the everyday regular people of our province. There are people like Adam Pitcher here who put this demonstration together today. 
they are the leaders of this province, not the people up on the eighth floor of this building. Any picture. People will go finger pointing. In the coming weeks, leading up to this vote on this budget, we've got to make more noise. We've got to have more demonstrations. We've got to get people out in the streets in every, every community of this province. And so I call on everyone here and I call on everyone across our great province to get out into their communities and to organize. Because when we get together, and when we resist, we can make of this place what we want of it. Not what they want of it, but what people want. It warms my heart to see everyone here today. This needs to continue. Solidarity, people. Solidarity. Do they think you're stupid? Do they 
Premier Paul Davis. How did you vote on Muskrat Falls, brother? <laughs> the howling beast. Muskrat Falls, Paul. Do you walk her very often?
Gritchie. Perspective of where we're coming from in our perspective. We need to confront that pattern in our family and lives yeah. yeah. That pattern is the problem, okay? We get sucked into that pattern like a vortex with its own volition and will, and we're sleepwalking for it every time, and we may very well just have sleptwalked and do it again, folks. But this time, coming out the other end, we have to do it differently, right and we have to think about what's going to happen next. And we got to stick together, all of us, everybody, and we've got to try to do it differently this time. But in the meantime, what I'd like everyone to realize is in 1939, the Waterford Hospital was 94 years old. Yeah. yeah. It's more than that. It's more than a building. But if that hasn't ever been a symbol of the problem, I don't know what it is. Because while we were dancing around, growing cucumbers and dealing with expats from Russia and watching people run away repeatedly, and even before Confederation, Mr. Squires was going out the window. While all this was happening, people were living in that hell hole. And they kept getting forgot about every time. And they still were. And we all have to change that no matter how tough it is. You know, in the meantime, Is 
Exactly. And that's what we need to focus on. At any time you encounter any force whatsoever, in my opinion, that takes you away from that central message, think twice. We have to work together to achieve our dignity Moving. and to strive to do things differently in this province than finding mega project after random mega project that someone has away from. Because it's been going on for a long time, folks. Now we're going to figure this out and we're going to get out of this. It's not going to help to point fingers with any people. We've got to put our heads together and think, and we've got to come up with a new solution. Thank you very much.
of life. We're coming together from all political persuasions. We are coming together because we know better. We know that this is not fair. We know it. Yeah. Now, many of you, many of you may have voted for the liberals in this last election. But many of you may have because they made promises. They made promises. They made promises that there wouldn't be any job cuts. Why wouldn't you believe them? They made promises that they were going to come up with diversification. Why wouldn't you believe them? They made promises of a stronger future. Why wouldn't you believe them? For me, for me, the hardest thing is that as a people of Newfoundland and Labrador, we know we're in a tough situation. We know we're in a tough financial situation. Not by our own making, mind you. There's something called muskrat folly that's been a real problem. We did not create this problem. We did not create this, cri this crisis. And as people of Newfoundland and Labrador, we were willing to do what we had to do to get us out of this crisis. We were willing to roll up our sleeves. We are resilient people. We are a smart people. We are a hard-working people. Look at how hard the people of this province work. We were willing to do that work. But this government has betrayed us. They haven't created a single job. They haven't created a single plan for diversification. They haven't called us together where we're all willing to roll up our sleeves and to work. This is what they haven't done. But I feel hope because together we are going to push back. We need innovation. We need creativity. We need leadership. We need a new culture. All together so that we can, we can make a difference. And I'm so heartened. Today I want us all to feel, aside from our anger, aside from a feeling of betrayal, I want us to feel the hope that we as a people, together, can push back. And I want everyone to tell their MHA. Tell your MHA what you think about this budget. Tell your MHA because your MHA is to be, to represent you, not their party, but to represent you. Tell your MHA. Tell your MHA. Tell your MHA. And let's continue. Free vote. Free vote. Free vote. Free vote. Free vote. our willingness to roll up our sleeves and work hard with our creativity, we can, we can diversify. We can harbor our energies and our excellence. We can do this together. And don't let them tell us it can't be done. Thank you. It's been an attack on low-income people. It's, it's been an attack on women. 
It's been a time of workers and teachers that are going to lose their jobs. Like not the rich. The not the rich. It's, not the rich. Not it's been an attack on children that are about to lose their schools. Students are 
is the future of this province. We are the ones who will have to struggle with student debt, the poor job prospects, the out-migration, and with other devastating consequences that will result from cutbacks to post-secondary education and the grants program. But students in this province, like students all across the country have shown time and time again, we will not be silent. United. Thank you all very much, first of all, for this opportunity. And thanks to Adam and to Lori for arranging this and inviting me for, here to speak to you. For those that don't know me, my name is Jerry Earl. I'm the president of Newfoundland and Labrador Associates for Public Employment. Dear friends, they say in Newfoundland and Labrador, a day can make a major difference. Just look at yesterday, there was a snowstorm, and today we're in sun. What a difference four months make. We had a, go a group now that's in government that promised four months ago a stronger tomorrow, yeah. a brighter future. Yeah. For themselves! I sat in this building along with some other labor leaders last Thursday in what we call a lock-in. And we were presented with the budget document and as we look through it, I grew angrier and angrier by the moment. Because I see how you were going to be affected, how working women and men were going to be affected in this province. And I can go on at length to the numbers, but I'll give you a few of examples. And I don't have to go far. Minister Aggie will try to blame Eastern Health. Masonic Park is closing down. They're taking the arm away from senior citizens. Shameful. They're telling us there's not enough of beds in Newfoundland and Labrador for long-term care, yet they're closing 40 beds down. They have beds left empty in the veterans' pavilion that seniors waiting in their homes that need a bed could have been in those beds months ago. Shameful. They are closing. They are closing. Now listen to Mark. They are closing 10 beds in a disgraceful mental health hospital in this province, which is now going to reduce the capacity of mental health. Yeah. 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 The message you're sending to our young people is we are going to have less jobs for you. Yeah. And I can speak to that personally. I sat at my dining room table just a couple of days ago, watching my daughter graduate from a college with a uh, tremendous debt load, applying for jobs in New Brunswick, yeah. in Nova Scotia, yeah. in Ontario. Yeah. Well, I don't want her to leave. I don't want any of our young people to leave. Yeah. Well, that's the future of this government offers us. Yeah. And then go out to rural communities. I have to look in the faces of those people that the minister and the premier don't have to. The minister came into our lock-in, and she said, oh, I'm going to reduce my salary by 10%. Wow. Right now, it wasn't her salary, it was the ministerial component yeah. of her salary. Mm. That's right. Let me tell you, we have young women and men across this province that are losing 100% of their salary because she's putting them out of work. Talk to the young woman. Talk to the young woman in Walbush. Her husband lost his job about 18 months ago to the large corporations which are out there looking for our money right now. And guess what Minister Bennett is doing to her? She's the breadwinner. She's taking away her job. So both of them are out of work. Shameful. In Gambo, the advanced education skills 
an office of social workers, client service officers that provide services to those that are socially disadvantaged, those with challenges. They are closing that office in its entirety and making people go to Gander for those services. These are people that cannot afford to drive to Gander. I am pleased to see that you are here and prepared to fight, hopefully along with us. Please stand with us. We will do our part. I am asking you, are you prepared to fight? Because I can tell you, on behalf of the 25,000 members of NAEP, we are prepared to fight. I am prepared to fight. And we will fight them day in and day out. So please stand together and fight. Thank you very much. Up all day. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, my name is Chris Lansdell. I'm with the Public Service Alliance of Canada. <laughs> and if someone had said to me six months ago I'd be standing at a rally speaking after an MHA from the Progressive Conservatives, I would still be laughing. <laughs> We represent public service employees in the federal and the, and the provincial public service across this province, including tuition assistance at MUN. And our members are heartbroken that our brothers and sisters, 650 employees losing middle class jobs so that the people on the eighth floor can have a T-bone instead of a prime rib every Sunday. Yay! I thought, I thought that a budget would all be about value. It turns out that they're taking the other side of the McDonald's menu and giving us a greasy, nasty meal that's going to make us sick to our stomachs. This isn't about a blame game. The people who are working hard every day in this province don't care if it's the PCs or the Liberals who put us here. That's right. We don't care whose fault Get this is. We care the that the middle class is being disproportionately abused by a greedy, nasty budget that helps nothing. It has been proven over and over again. You cannot cut your way to prosperity. You cannot slice away good jobs, middle class jobs, and expect to succeed. Over 2% of the average income for a middle class owner is going to this ridiculous McLevy. $650,000 owned by the Nalco CEO, he can take that out of his tax and pay it. Now, I might be what you lovely people call a come from away. But even I know, that when you are a Newfoundland or a Labradorian, you are that first and you are everything else second. Yeah. The members of the House of Assembly, you are Newfoundlanders and Labradorians first and politicians second. Yeah. Your parents, your constituents, your people want you to vote with your heart and not with the color of your tie. Right. It is time to stand up for the people who put you where you are, who are responsible for your salary. Listen to what we want and do as we're asking you to do. Do you remember, brothers and sisters, when teachers tanked the economy? No, you don't, because it never happens. Right. Do you remember when nurses were greedy and took money from subprime mortgages so they could line their own pockets? No, you don't, because it never happens. Do you remember when office clerks, when government workers, when street cleaners, when plow operators, which we could do with today, do you remember when they sat at home counting their millions while hardworking politicians scraped to get by? I think the punchline writes itself. We've said it before, we'll say it again. The people, united. We'll never be defeated. The people united will never be defeated. We'll never be defeated. The people united will never be defeated. The people united will never be defeated. Ladies and gentlemen, these are the leaders of this province. Adam Pitcher, you deserve the standing ovation to end all standing ovations for starting this.
This is the start. This is not the end. This is the start. Every one of us needs to go home. We need to tell our friends. We need to tell our families, whether they're here or they're away, whether they're in Newfoundland or Halifax or Ontario, it doesn't matter. We need to say, this is wrong. We will fight this and we will not stand by and let a budget be one of the one billion people screwed. Thank you very much. Hello, brothers and sisters. My name is Wayne Lucas. I just had somebody say to me, should everything be saved? What are you going to say? Well, everything hasn't been saved because I want to talk about the levy for a second. Close to paying taxes. Taxes provide good, strong public That's services. That's right! And that keeps our people employed, and they take care of our senior citizens, and they take care of our children in school, and people who are in the hospitals. So we need to pay taxes. But do we have to have a tax system for somebody who makes $20,000 a year is going to pay $300? And then somebody who makes over $100,000 a year is only going to pay $900? Yes. Now I've got another thing. Somebody said to me, well what can government do? And this hasn't been mentioned here today. One thing government can do right now, they do great jobs by creating universal child care here in this yeah. place right now. Yeah. that St. John's is the second highest place in Canada to, to provide child care for your children? Yes. So we, we put that in our solution to the government. And it's not the first time. We've been doing it now for 10 years. And nobody's listening. So why not be creative and try to create a few jobs here in Newfoundland Labrador? Why not try to lift people out of despair in Newfoundland Labrador? Instead, they're punishing each and every one of you out there. Each and every one. We have to stand strong. We have to stand taller than what we are. We have to come out here. We have to get 10,000 people on their heels. Association. I'm here because I believe in public education. I'm concerned about education. I'm here because I believe investment in education is an investment in our future, in the, prov in the future of this province. Pure and simple. Unfortunately, this budget is not investing in education. It has done its level best to remove the resources from education. In fact, in attempting to remove this provincial deficit, they are ending up creating a deficit in education. They're transferring a provincial deficit yeah. to the backs of our children, yeah. to our teachers, to the parents. Absolutely. They have removed, basically, they've been implemented kindergarten, but have removed the human resources needed to address inclusive education, to, uh, to, to address the mental health issues that teachers witness daily. I had the opportunity, folks, this week, as way at Canadian Teachers Federation, Justin, uh, Pr uh, Prime Minister Trudeau addr addressed the delegation. He was passionate about education. He was passionate about the importance of public education, about teachers, about having the resources to deal with mental health issues. Now, I have a belief, a strong belief, that Minister Kirby has the same passion. How do I know? I know because when he was in opposition, he was fighting for the very same things that this budget cuts out of the education system. I have hope for Mr. Kirby, and I'm calling on him right now to reignite his passion for the education system, to call upon the resources that he fought for when he was in opposition. 
If he believed in them, he believes them now, and the budget should not stand in the way of resourcing our system. Thank you. to get up now uh, can have a have a chat a uh, little bit of a soapbox you know so we got our first speaker here anyway hello everybody okay I'm here to represent those without a voice and that's the people with disabilities people in low-income housing people who are suffering as it is now I went back to school I'm on ASC and I'm not so I'm ashamed to be on social services, but you know something? I went back to school. I've got I'm, got, I'm almost finished now my grade 12 after 33 years. I was granted and was gonna be funded through disability with AS with, with advanced education and skills, and my daughter was. And we found out Monday our advanced education and skills department told us the people with disabilities on advanced education skills will not be getting funding for school. I lost my funding. I want to be, I want to be a part of the solution, not a part of the problem. People don't realize what's happening with people on low income housing. If you don't know this by now, I will tell you. If you have pain problems with your teeth, they were not paid to have that teeth pulled out. Now they're gonna cover for pain management, okay? So we have drugs on our streets as it is. Our kids are being ruined because of it. My thought to do that is I was gonna go in to be a youth counselor and addiction program. I wanted to help our youth. I wanna help people with mental health issues. I don't want our system to have any wars between classes. When we fight, we all fight together. Because remember, because remember, it's people like me that keeps people with social services and people in housing, ye are the highest paid taxpayers, but we are also taxpayers too, because we help employ ye. Oh, right. So back me up and make a speech and make it right and bring in the disabilities and, and stop cut from funding from people that really want to be a part of the solution. I am tired of being a part of the problem, and I want a chance to have an education. So give me my chance. And let's help our youth that are suffering with the drugs on our streets. What's going to happen now with this new dental program? More drugs on the street because they can't have that tooth pulled. Now, to you that might not mean nothing. You might have insurance. But we don't. So please, listen to my story. Back me up. Look me up on Facebook. My name is Joy Newhook. And I am proud to be the most proudest Newfoundland that has ever walked. And today, we all, we all got to do this together. Nobody should be left alone and suffering in silence anymore. The Waterford Hospital, the new prison. We don't need a new prison. We need a new hospital to make those people better. So you don't have to do that the first time and be criminals. And this is what the government is going to do. It's going to take more people in the system off help and no help at all and they're going to end up having no other choice but to go and be criminals which is wrong everybody deserves a chance in this rock and i deserve it too now anybody else who wants to speak up anyone with disabilities any ally stand together right we're all unique stick together and that's what you gotta do so please look me up on facebook and help me make my voice heard i'm gonna fight with my education so i can help your children not to be drug addicts and that's where it comes down to i want my education and i want it back i lost it monday i won't get post funding i want it back now please thank you hello folks just a brief public service announcement your house of assembly your House of Assembly is opening at 1.30. And today, many of us will be speaking to the budget. 
I will be uh, presenting a petition that many of you have signed. If you have not signed the petition, there are copies right there. Also, take copies and get people to sign them. Unfortunately, we can't use electronic petitions because we're not yet state of the art in our uh, in our ways of managing our House of Assembly. We're state of the art in some in some areas. So 1:30, you'll see your MHAs walking in. You, but in the gallery, you won't be allowed to bring your signs. You need a photo ID to get in. If you're a little bit hungry, there's a cafeteria downstairs. There may be a little bit of food down there. But please come in and hear what this government is saying about the budget. Hear what other people are saying about the budget. It's your House of Assembly. It belongs to you. We will speak. Some people say that. Some people say that you're not allowed to speak in the house. That is true. However, we are more than willing to speak on your behalf. I am more than willing, um, and our leader, Earl McCurdy, and Lorraine Michael, we are more than willing to bring your concerns to the House of Assembly. So do come to the gallery. It will be good to see you there. My name is Jordan Willis Lester. I graduated from MUN last year when I was 27 going on 28. And I'm really glad someone spoke up for people with disabilities because I'm a student and a worker and a person with disability myself. But it's not just that. My whole struggle my entire life is that we have a fundamental inequality in this province between people with disabilities and urban and rural areas. People in urban areas get access to the learning disability assessments they need. And it was only three years ago that I spoke to Minister uh, then MHA and NDP education critic who's now um, education minister telling him that right now learning disability tests at MUN, College of North Atlantic, Marine Institute are not covered by our medical care plan. Currently you can have to pay anywhere between a thousand to twenty thousand dollars just to get your disability recognized and in order to even qualify for the disability grants, you have to pay this amount. So unless you're independently wealthy, you can't afford it. And the other thing I can't understand exactly, Shane, is that this government is also attacking self-employed people, workers who are not unionized, and people who are trying to start small and medium local businesses to create jobs for this economy, the green jobs we need, the accessible jobs we need. It's shameful that successive governments of both liberals and progressive conservatives have not listened to disability advocates who said that we need provincial accessibility standards the way Ontario does. This is how they do it. You get five years, you get five years to make every building in the province accessible. You have to pay penalties, fines, if you fail to do so, and you offer grants to renovate. Let's take those engineers and those oil workers who've been laid off from Alberta and Saskatchewan and across this country, and let's get them working to make green, accessible jobs that work for the people, not being the part of the The other thing I'm about to tell you, and I've never said this before on TV, I'm also trans. I'm also pansexual, I'm also on the asexual, aromantic spectrum, and no one ever speaks up for us unless we speak up for ourselves. People like me, sexual minorities, we've dealt with workplace harassment, we've dealt with uh, harassment in the K-12 system, we've dealt with harassment in the university. I've had to confront professors who told me, and I quote, that academic freedom protects them from having to respect my human rights. So yeah, I guess all of that was pretty much what I was going to say, but there's so many things we can do better, and I have the misfortune that Dale Kirby is my MHA, and uh, unfortunately, whenever I've tried to talk to him about issues, he'd be like, yeah, that's a really good idea, unfortunately, party lines. He only and, wanted your vote. Exactly, and then I had the misfortune of being under Steve King, and being told the same thing, that somehow party lines were more important than people. And what I say to all those liberal MHAs, like I said to the PC MHAs, during Muskrat Falls and Bill 29, break ranks. Sit as independents if necessary. If you can't stay in the Liberal Party and have your voice, break ranks. Sit as an independent. Join the ranks of the opposition. And maybe just maybe we can bring Dwight Ball down today. We don't need to wait four years. We can bring him down today. The Quebec students in the Maple Spring brought down John Trey when he tried to increase tuition. Students back in the 90s, Brent Brian Tobin, back to Ottawa when he tried to raise tuition. I think Dwight Ball, you dropped the ball, and you know what? It's time you resign. My name is Greg 
Smith. Uh, first and foremost, uh, who here loves Newfoundland and Labrador? We have to come together. It doesn't matter if you voted for the Progressive Conservatives, the New Democrats, or the Liberals. If we cannot unite 550,000 people, we definitely will not get 10,000 people for a rally. We need to all come together. It doesn't matter if you're blue, if you're green, if you're orange, or if you're red. People need to know that they are taken care of. We put them into office. We can take them out. So, contact your MHAs. Tell them, you know, they should cross the floor, they should have a free vote, and they should vote against this terrible, terrible, disgusting budget. Every single one of you, for the next rally, invite everybody on your friends list to come, because there is no reason that we cannot have 10 to 20,000 people here standing up, fighting back, and united for me so guys, that's all I have to say, but stick together and let's do this, guys. Come on. Yeah. Hello, my name is Mary Gilbert. 